Heavy Metal my Rock. Global Mind. Participating, I appreciate it. Nice to be here. Yes, and we're going to be talking to Ronnie Latecro of TNT fame about the release of his new solo CD, Bigfoot TV, due out March 18. So, congratulations! It's a killer CD. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I mean, it's it's a strange album, is it? But I mean, uh, uh, it's personal for me. <laughs> yeah, that was. I was going to have a couple of questions about that. You know, this being your first CD, solo CD in six years, was this something that you were working on during the pandemic? Uh, definitely. Uh, I started, uh, you know, first uh, the pandemic kind of just kicked the whole business out, you know, and I got almost depressed by it. But then after a few months, I decided to, okay, try to turn it around and be creative. Mm -hmm. And uh, now it seems to die, die out. It's yes. it's vanishing, right? So slowly, but, yes. but then, then again, uh, now we have a war in Europe. <laughs> so. Yeah, are you um, are you close by? I know that um, you, your country touches upon uh, Russia very, very at the very top. Uh, it is. We have a nice relation, although we're NATO. You know, uh, the the Russians. I don't think they're going to bother us. But uh, Ukraine is about uh, three hours flight away from uh, Norway. Oh. Okay, all right. Well, stay. I hope you stay safe, you know, with all that. So, best of luck with that. So, you have me intrigued by the title of the CD and the uh, the cover, the Bigfoot TV. What does it all mean? Uh, Bigfoot TV is, uh, you know, kind of what should I say? It, uh, not a metaphor, even, but but it's a description of of, of kind of useless TV. <laughs> uh, like hunting Hitler, the treasure on Oak Island, uh, hunting Bit Bigfoot, etc. You know, kind of te a television series that uh, where you never get to an answer. And in that respect, it, 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 it's about my life too, because I can never seem to get to an answer. <laughs> Do you know what, what was this all about, right? Right, right. So, yeah. And I, I love my favorite song was. The first track, um, Life on Long Island, particularly seeing all the video uh, with all the pictures from you from the 80s and the band. Um, what was TNT doing in the 80s in Long Island at the time and how did you get there? Uh, we got there through an American management at the call, a time called for, uh, Fireball. Mm -hmm. he, he was a small manager, but he kind of brought us into the States. Uh, then a few months later, in already in '85, we got '84. Uh, we got signed to Doc McGee's management. That mm. you know, Bon Jovi and Kiss and uh, and Motley Crue and la later Kiss, right? Yeah. So okay. uh, and being a European band with a with an American singer, it was uh, quite exciting. Uh, and I, uh, I came with like uh, preconceived ideas about American culture, but but then I met, I met middle class America and below, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I fell in love. What can I say? Uh, yeah, Amer Americans are more, more considerate and more polite, uh, and uh, a lot of positive things I can say uh, yeah. about your culture. We are. I, I live in New Jersey, which is very very close to Long Island. Yeah. So, yeah, right. Know, uh, know, Jersey, I, 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 rem I remember playing in Jersey several times, and uh, I, I just love the whole East Coast of the United States. That was my home for, I, I don't know, seven, eight years. Yeah. So. It was a very smart move to bring you over. I think that's what, you know, kind of broke you here in the States, you know? Not many bands do that, you know? No. Um, uh, it was great times, you know, American yeah. bands, uh, American bands that were not big in the US, like the Tubes and stuff. They were like uh, incredible big in Europe, uh, Mother's Finest mm -hmm. and, and vice versa. So it, it was uh, like a more cultural exchange in the Western world at the time, yeah. right? Right. And that's when, that's when commercial heavy metal rock was really 
breaking through for us with Def Leppard and Bon Jovi and Aerosmith. That was that was the high point, you know. The whole thing and, and the European movement with uh, Black Sabbath, Heaven and Hell, yes. Iron Maiden, etc. Yeah. Europe, uh, you know, the whole uh, movement. Yeah, I played in a cover band, guitar, back in the day. So we used to do all okay. the, you know, all the cover songs. So we had a very good singer, and he was able to do. He was very versatile. Oh, okay, that's cool to hear. Yeah, uh, we never wrote originals, but we, we, you know. So when I see the pictures yeah, but, of you, but, 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 uh, uh, any singer would say uh, singing that eighties stuff is really hard. Don't yeah. you agree? That's oh yeah, technic uh, technically hard, and and also on uh, on guitar. I, I would guess uh, a lot of that stuff was pretty complicated. Back in the day, yeah, it now it's, even... rock, it's, uh, it's Still, it was rock and roll. What happened to rock and roll? <laughs> right. You know, we, were, we've, we spent a lot of time trying to perfect and learn the Iron Maiden, the Judas Priest, and all those yeah, songs. Yeah, so right. it, it was, you know, you want to do it precise because you didn't want to look foolish in front of a crowd in a bar, you know, because that's, a, that's the worst yeah, thing yeah, possible. Right. But the pictures yeah. were fun to look at you because I looked the same. You know, we all looked like kids that were long hair and the jeans and the ripped shirts and sitting on our Camaros. So yeah, it was pretty fun. Uh, it was a fantastic time, but I think it will come back because so. uh, uh, there's too mm. many algorithms in music now with all the EDM shit and all that shit uh, going on. So at, at sooner or later, you know, the music with, with a groove and, uh, and, uh, and a violent move <laughs> will... And the, song will was a, and the song was a really nice perspective. You know, it had some some good stuff. It had some challenging things in it. So it was mm. it was nice to hear you talk. I guess it was from an honest approach, right? Mm, definitely. Yeah. Um, do you feel that you've established a solo sound separate from TNT, um, or is it? Do you think it's still evolving? Because you have a quite a significant number of solo albums out there. I try to kind of separate the TNT music from my solo works mm -hmm. uh, because after I don't know how many 13 studio albums with TNT, I, I, do you know, it's uh, inflation. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so, so I, I try to, uh, my solo work is my kind of playground outside TNT. Uh, still, I try to keep my guitar style and, you know, what, what, what's ever seen there. Yeah, you have a great style. It's very fluid playing. I, I love your playing. All back from Thank the TNT you. days to the solo CD. Thank you so much. When you're writing, and what do you do? You write for the project, or do you just stockpiling riffs? You say TNT folder, solo folder. <laughs> uh, it, it's uh, strange that you say that because I do that. I put stuff in the TNT folder, and then I uh, uh, try to separate it. Yeah. At one point, uh, at one point, I wasn't able to do it. Some so, some of my psychedelic shit ended up in the TN on the TNT albums because yeah. the other guys got inspired and then. But, but now I'm much more able to separate the uh, the issues. So uh, yeah. and to bring uh, bring uh, bring my Joe Walsh sound, which is my you know probably all time favorite guitar player next to Frank Marino. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> but, great. Uh, so, so, so those two guys are my mentors, and, and I'm thinking, also TNT, I want to be free like those guys were. Yeah, and the, and the beauty of it, too, is that you could stick with the format for TNT, and then you could go completely off and do what you want to do, and it may be more experimental than the TNT box, you know? Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, that's a great so approach. Um, what were some ways that you like to reinvent yourself from TNT to your solo career? I, I think the last years I reinvented myself in a kind of uh, sound shaping. I do different tricks with echoes. I do different techniques. I think. I, I, mean, I mean, it's slow learning, <laughs> you know, because ob obviously when I was young and, uh, and furious and those fast runs. And but where do you reinvent yourself from uh, from there? Well, you just go uh, go into psychedelia. So. So uh, Frank Saba Sapa said it. You know where where you everything is like uh, sung. All the words are sung all, and described. All the notes are played. Where you go from there? Absurdities. Do you know? Just like weird stuff. Like uh, 
uh, in, in words uh, to you know you can just uh, swap the words around and uh, and notes too. So that's cool. The the, the, the older I get, I'm, I'm more getting more and more interested in where you can go in that sense, right? That's great. You know, and you, you touched upon this earlier. There's a a lot of your personality, I would imagine, in these songs. They seem very personal, personable, and uh, about yourself. Is that the case, mm. lyrically? It is, uh, completely. Uh, mm. These were things that happened, uh, happened to me, or environmental warnings, or uh, like the ice of the woods is about how I, uh, I live in the forest. You know, there's mm. no man around. I just see stars at night, no electric pollution or anything, right? right. Uh, uh, and being a, being a lone island as a guitar player, I feel like a lonely island in the sea in many ways, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And being out in the forest, that, that kind of inspires me so much. So so the whole album is about personal topics, how I, I saw the woods, how I communicate with the trees. You can believe it or not. Uh, or or a UFO, which is, uh, was a close encounter I had in 1994, close really? to... Uh, uh, and and uh, if you listen to the lyrics, I actually describe it like 100% what happened. <laughs> what happened? If you don't mind me asking. No, listen to the song. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's all in the song. It's it's all in the song. And uh, do you know, just up, uh, I can tell you one secret. They are here. Yeah, I agree. I don't think we're alone. There, 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 there's no doubt about it. Yeah, I don't think uh, we're alone. Uh, we, we have a lot of uh, encounters here with uh, starships and stuff uh, at my time. It's just to look up. Uh, wow. don't, don't look at your don't look at your telephone. Look at the at, at the fucking universe, and then you will see them, right? We're we're in a congested area, so it's hard to see a lot of the beautiful stars. Yeah, so. yeah, just get in your car up in the the, the Catskills, and you'll be right. <laughs> true. Very true. Um, Tell me about the band. Um, you assembled a band. Uh, is this somebody, people that you've worked with in the past? Are they new? Was it specific for the CD? I worked with uh, the musicians uh, for quite some time. So, mm -hmm. so they're just like, uh, what should I say? Not established names, but uh, I just wanted fresh blood to, you know, to, to create this. So a uh, young drummer, he's uh, 30 years old. He worked with the level 42 bass player. Uh, in London for many years, so, so so I just picked this, you know, I think uh, talented people to, to back me on, on the album. Are they all from your area? Um, and did you put the CD together? Like, oh, you know, you said they, 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 they come from different uh, areas uh, and Norway is like the United States. Is, uh, it takes, uh, it, it takes uh, you three days to drive through the country. If you drive 24 hours a day, it takes you three days to drive from south to north. That's a long time, yeah. That, yeah, but then you get kind of an idea of how, how big it is. So some people come from, uh, they live in England, neighboring country, uh, and they come in from, uh, but, but, but uh, sweetheart people. Yeah, uh, you great. should come over, you should come over and... Uh, I'd like that. Uh, and meet the Scandinavian girls. <laughs> I don't know if my wife will think about that. <laughs> oh. Oh, she, I think you bring her, bring her, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will. Um, you know what I really liked too was the sequencing on the CD. I think you did a tremendous job uh, putting it all together from beginning to end. Did you spend a lot well, of time with you. that? Thank you, I did, I think. I, uh, because it's so diverse, you know. Yeah. I want to kind of open up a new door for each song, you know, where uh, the song ends. I'm not going to repeat myself. And, I know that's a disadvantage in hard rock because people tend to like to have 10 tracks with the same formula almost. Mm -hmm. to, to, you know, but, but I come sure. from variety. Uh, the Beatles, 70s prog, uh, American and European prog music, you know. So I like variation anyway. Uh, I might be too old, but I think I, I did a good uh, balance on this album and a good running order, right? Yeah. I think you did. I really liked it. It was, it was a nice flow from beginning to end. So kudos to you for that. Thank you. Now, could you give us a status on TNT? 
What's going on with the band? Uh, yeah, TNT, we are in talks uh, because TNT has a 40 year anniversary this year. But yeah. uh, uh, 40 years, that's insane. Um, we're uh, planning on maybe trying to hit America next year. Uh, uh, we haven't played uh, more than four shows, I think, in uh, in the United States since '92. Yeah. So so, so we did so, so, so we didn't uh, run away with any of the money from the promoters uh, in many ways, but uh, you know we want to try to play uh, monsters of rock cruise. Mm -hmm. where we have a, a, a unsettled issue uh, and try to bring back the original lineup uh, that's great with for, for those gigs and then obviously an anniversary tour in scandinavia and europe with maybe the first singer the last singer i don't know uh, you're talking uh, tony right to uh, tony harnell i think we, 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 we're currently in talks i, I think uh, he's positive about it and everybody's okay. positive so uh, That'd be great. He has such uh, an incredible voice. He has such an incredible voice. He has an incredible voice, and it's uh, a sweetheart person. So, yeah. yeah, and you guys had a tremendous chemistry too. I thought, you know, uh, we, we had we we we've been brothers. We've been fighting too. So yeah. back and forth for uh, uh, that. That's may maybe, uh, but it's not always been me and him. It's been other issues. Do you know yeah. so? Uh, but all, all in all, we're, we're friends now for the last, uh, I mean, I talk to, to him uh, twice a week. And oh, that's great. We've done, we've done that for a few years now, I think so. Yeah, life, life is too short to have enemies like that, you know? You always want to work yeah. together. And no, I think so too, I think so. Um, uh, yeah, uh, it's happening now, not tomorrow, not yesterday. Yeah. Now, um, you and Diesel are the longest standing members of the band. Is it safe to say you guys call the shots and what happens with TNT and where the, you take the band? Uh, I, I, well, I would say that's fair Fair to say. I got to give Diesel that, uh, that power. At the same time, if we uh, do it with the original lineup, I know they, they have uh, certain uh, issues and, uh, and uh, needs and expectations and uh, wishes for how it should be. Uh, so, so we're just uh, trying to be dynamic, but Obviously, we know that uh, if we put uh, the band together and uh, and do some shows uh, wherever, uh, yeah. we're, we're one of the we're one of the biggest underground hard rock bands ever. <laughs> now, would it take a long time to get up to speed on all these songs, um, or you think you know you don't need a lot of time? To, to, to you mean to write my songs? Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. For TNT to go back together and performing together, would it take a lot of time? Oh, no, no, to... no, 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 it's my blood. Uh, I play those, uh, the older classics uh, every year for 40 years. Mm -hmm. So it's in my blood. I plug in and the song That's is there. That's great. That's great. Well, listen, uh, I... it, it's like ACDC. It's just in the blood and it sounds, we use the same amplifiers. So we get the same sound. We don't have any modern fucking technology or anything. It just yeah. sounds just like it did in the old days. Oh, that's great. That's great. Well, I want to thank you for your time today. And it was really fascinating interview. And you're, you're really a great guy. And I can't wait to see TNT when they come around. So I never did got to see it in my youth. But I'll definitely come to see it when you're playing around. So that'd be fantastic. Thank you so much for the interview. And you're always welcome to Norway. And bring your wife. And uh, <laughs> I will. I will. I will. To the most uh, to the most exclusive holiday place on the planet. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay. And I wish you the best of luck with the CD. So thank you so much for your time. All right. Uh, thank you so much. It was nice. Bye. Bye-bye. Heavy Metal Rock. Oh, my. Oh, my.